jazz from before it became elevator music. JNR 108.5, Jazz Nation Radio. This is jazz, America's art form, before America's art form became ruining other countries. JNR 108.5, Jazz Nation Radio. For people who value improvisation, not lip syncing, JNR. Jazz Nation Radio. Music from when America was cool. JNR 108.5. JNR 108.5. Jazz Nation Radio. The end of the dial. The beginning of modernism. The masters are on. JNR 108.5. What do you call four geniuses soloing at once? Jazz. JNR 108.5. Jazz Nation Radio. Yeah, that's it. JNR 108.5. The masters play only on JNR. Jazz Nation Radio. Music from a time when musicians could actually play musical instruments, as opposed to dance like strippers. The masters keep playing on JNR. Hey, Liberty City, try to do something good today that wouldn't embarrass your moms. Hey, Liberty City, are you enjoying this music? I'm picking these tracks just for you. Liberty City, let's get it on. You're listening to Jazz Nation Radio. I hope you're enjoying this great jazz music. I'm enjoying it. I'm loving it. You're bringing me back, Liberty City. Cerveza Heights. Uh, I think we had a request uh, from someone in Cerveza Heights. And uh, so uh, we'll play something kind of hip for them. I hope you enjoy listening to this jazz. This is Roy Haynes. There's a lot of crime, but uh, maybe if we had more uh, music, jazz music, pardon the expression, probably would have less crime and it's no time for crime you know uh, hey this is Roy Haynes playing all that jazz for you out there I hope you're enjoying it Jazz Nation Radio man I just saw that movie popping can I really get three hours of my life back why don't we just stay here and listen to some great jazz this is Roy Haynes on your dial Jazz Nation Radio I'm definitely addicted to this great music it's for sure, man. If I stop and think about it, it's what I love to do from the beginning. It's what I've been doing for a living for many, many years. It's so great now I'm even getting awards for doing it, and I love it. I'm hooked on it. J&R, Jazz Nation Radio. Yeah, J&R is slick. it got a lot of meanings. J for juvenile and R for Roy. All rock. I prefer Roy. Rock and Roy. We got a lot of bling in Liberty City, definitely. You know, some of that was happening way back. I used to, uh, there was one of the New Orleans players, I forget who it was exactly, that had, had a, uh, a bulldog with a gold tooth. Liberty City's going to get busted today. Why? Well we'll, well, we'll explain it as we go along. You're bringing me back, Liberty City. You're listening to Jazz Nation Radio. Uh, you be careful out there, Liberty City. Sometimes when I'm driving in my car, I'll stop at a at a light or something in the car next to me. They're blasting their music, so I'll close that window on that side so I can listen to my cool jazz. I really do think this is the best station in Liberty City. Serious jazz with a town with a serious problem. Big band to bebop with taking it to the bridge and dropping things off the overpass, Liberty City. Don't you really love this music? We're going to play jazz all day and all night. Don't get too worried about terrorism out there. Just listen to some jazz. Liberty City's been around a long time, you know. Oh, man, there were jazz clubs on every other corner, all parts of Liberty City. Were you hip to that? I moved to Liberty City in 1945 when all you really had to do was put a few dimes in the jukebox and groove. Liberty City groove. There are a lot of bridges that we cross, you know, constantly in life, you know. Uh, I can, if I start naming them, I'd probably be here uh, the rest of the evening. Taking us to the bridge, of course, the original 
Take it to the bridge. Sonny, let's take it to the bridge. The bridge, in this case, would have been uh, one of the bridges here in Liberty City, you know, where Sonny Rollins was hanging out, practicing during the period when he was taking a long hiatus. And then uh, he came up with a record called The Bridge, and I think a title of one of the compositions was The Bridge. You do the first eight bars, then you go to the bridge, and take it to D, down D, take it to the bridge. So that expression uh, came up quite a bit, you know, with James and Rollins. And so I continue to use it, because we're gonna take it back to the bridge anyhow, with the music, of course, and in general. Wow, how you doing, Liberty City? The, the, the most popular one when I was a teenager and coming out playing this music was the Lindy Hop, the Lindy Hop. And that was, you know, it was definitely Savoy Ballroom. That's where I had my first gig and playing at Savoy Ballroom when the people were really doing the Lindy Hop. You know, bringing the girl up, throwing her around, and you know, she would have on a, a, a wide skirt that would spread out and have on some serious underclothes underneath it. It was very slick looking, it was nice to see, and a lot of, lot of uh, action in it, a lot of, uh, you know, back and forth and energy. Back in the early days, I'm talking about 40s, 50s, when I first started playing music all over the world, we, you know, we had to wear shirts and ties and suits and tuxedos up until the 60s. I think that started getting very popular with some of the rock groups. There were guys wearing uh, jeans on stage and all of that, and they were making more money than a lot of uh, the jazz players. So, I mean, why not? Turn off that TV. On TV, I see all that plastic surgery and what do they call it, makeovers? You know, the new noses and, you know, dun, 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 dun. I don't think it's necessary for me to get plastic surgery. I'm kind of slick, you know, I got a slick nose, you know. Yeah, I'm cool. I think it'd be a great idea to do something serious about the music instead of cursing and thinking that that's hip. It's not hip particularly to use those, you know, four-letter words and, oh, man. They have, some of them have five and six and seven letters in them. You know, let's speak a little more English that we all can understand and agree with. Hey, motherfucker! Airport security, now that is something, uh, even some of the females, man, sometimes a lady would open my bag, I mean, she would just rip my bag open and break the zippers and everything and act pretty mannish and acted like she wanted to kick my butt. I think they should lighten up a little and tighten up in other areas. Cool out, Francis International Airport. You really have to cool out, please. I was so slick when I was young in school, I used to be playing on the desk with my fingers, drumming on the desk. And all the students in the class would be looking at me and not the teacher and listening to me. Naturally, the teacher didn't dig that at all. Sent me to the principal's office, wrote a note. I don't know what he said in that note, but he must have said I was the worst MF ever or something. Because he said, don't come back to the school unless you bring one of your parents. I went back with my mother. My mother listened to the principal talk about me. I think it was the principal that was talking about me. And my mother said, that couldn't be my, my child. You know. But I, that's what I was doing, drumming on the desk. So they said, don't come back to you. And I don't think I went back much after that. I said, the hell with that. Definitely stay away from that burger shot, man. You would get more than indigestion. I saw one in the airport yesterday. One of the guys in my band stopped there, and I told him, no, I was going to walk further and check something else out. I went to one of them coffee joints. Bean machine, look out. Ooh, seriously jacked up. Uh, some people really get high off of drinking coffee, I think. I mean, they get fired up, uh, on edge, man. A, a different kind of nervousness is, man, you know, wow, wow. Coffee, man, that's, I think they got something in coffee, man, that's doing something else uh, that shouldn't be legal. You know, that's something to think about. I met Art Blakey when he was playing with Fletcher Henderson. I was still a teenager in Liberty City, of course, <laughs> way back in that period. And he used to call me, I, I looked very young, you know, when I was a teenager, he used to call me his son. And then uh, 
maybe some years ago before he passed away, uh, he was having uh, something at one of the theaters. He wanted me to be there, and I went as one of his special guests, and I played this solo, and he grabbed me and picked me up. He was so proud of me. And I said at that point that when I was a teenager, he used to call me his son, but now we're all brothers. You know, not the same age, he was a little older than me. Yeah, we were pretty close. And, you know, as I talk about all of these people, most of them are gone, and I'm still out here doing it. And, you know, it gets pretty involved when you start talking about it, so I think we better end right there. <laughs> we have some great tracks right here on Jazz Nation Radio. The worst feeling, I think, I witness is when I'm walking down the street and there's a lady like right behind me and she's talking and I'm thinking that she's talking to me and she's, I turn around, I'm answering her, man, and she's talking to her cell phone. That's, that's kind of tricky, you know. You know, maybe that's cool to walk down the street like you just out of a institution or something. You're talking loud, man, the conversation, people don't know what's happening. People don't know what's up with that, you know, in my case, anyhow. But uh, hey, cell phones, El Strange Old Mucho. Now mentioning Miles Davis, the summer of 1950, we both bought automobiles around the same week, and it just happened. Not even realizing we both bought convertibles, different make cars, and we would go racing through the park late at night, and or early in the afternoon and get tickets. None of us had a driver's license. And as I look back on that, it was, man, it seemed like a dream, you know. Oh yeah, Liberty City was beautiful, you know, and uh, it was always great. Miles would win the race, but end up getting uh, uh, a ticket of some sort. <laughs> Probably speed. <laughs> you know, that was the thing. I would bump into him many, many years later and he would be telling all the ladies there, me and Roy Haynes used to smash up our cars and all that. Always having accidents, you know. And, but uh, those were very beautiful days, man. Uh, here's a song, an original composition called Snap Crackle, which is one of my nicknames way back in the day. And I hope you dig it. Uh, here's a song by a buddy of mine, Art Blakey and the Jazz Messengers. Moaning. Sonny used to come to my house before I knew he even played the instrument. It's when I lived up on Sugar Hill in Liberty City, of course. And now it's still great to have a great musician around that's still very active. And Sonny Rollins. Now, here's a man that offered me the drum chair in his band when his drummer was going on his honeymoon. So you're going to hear from Duke Ellington now. Take the A-Train. I'm Roy Haynes, and I'm going to play you some Roy Haynes. Here we got the man himself, Miles Davis. Uh, yes, let's listen to some John Coltrane, who I was fortunate enough to play with uh, quite a few times. And I'm sure you're going to enjoy this, so uh, check it out. It's time to take the A-Train with Duke Ellington. It's the one and only Art Blakey, the legendary Art Blakey, a good friend of mine. This tune's called Moaning. It's one of 20th century's greatest geniuses, Charlie Parker. Charlie Parker, special genius. Night and day with the big band. Dizzy Gillespie was quite a great teacher of uh, this music. Great innovator. Here's some Dizzy Gillespie for you. Move by Miles Davis. When I was a teenager, I was in love with the Basie band. So I was always a Basie fan from that day till the rest of his life. I did have the pleasure of filling in with the Basie band a couple of times in uh, my career, you know, which I naturally enjoyed. And the record you're going to hear is April in Paris. Let's do some Count Basie right here on Jazz Nation Radio. I hope you enjoy this track. Here's some Giant Steps, St. Thomas, Sonny Rollins. Whether or not... It's time for the weather, or not. It's always hot here on Jazz Nation Radio, but let's go check the weather. Let's see what these guys have to say about the weather. It's weather time. Don't go away. we got to stop this great jazz to go to a commercial. Here's some folks that want to sell you stuff. It's time for commercials. It's like a tip job front. Drop some money in. Hey, Jazz Nation Radio, got to play some commercials right now. Hey, it's time for the news. 
And it ain't good. Hey, it's time for the news. Let's go find out who we're bombing today. All right, folks. Let's go up to the newsroom for a minute. All right. It's time for that weasel news. You know they're going to lie to you. Getting dark out there, Liberty City. Good morning, Liberty City. Stay cool. All right. I'm going to be your DJ all night long. I hope you're having a good night, Liberty City. Stay off the internet. Don't be clicking around all night. Have a good morning. Don't get in trouble with the police. You hear? Hey, you're taking good care of yourself this afternoon? Hope you're having a fun morning out there. This is Jazz Nation Radio, Roy Haynes. Ah, it's looking like it's going to be a great afternoon. Evening's finally here. How you doing? All right, good evening. How you doing this fine night, Liberty City? Good afternoon, Liberty City. 